Information Systems in Context Example, Transaction Processing System or TPS. So what is a TPS? Well, a TPS or Transaction Processing System is an information system that collects, stores, modifies and retrieves transactions of an organization. And look, that's straight out of the IPT syllabus. Okay, but so what might be some of the purposes of these systems and hopefully you can relate to this in your own experience. Well, a transaction processing systems purpose may be to purchase an item like when you go to a shop and buy something. Okay, a transaction processing system would be used there to process an invoice which may be sent if you're running a business and for the amount that you'll be paying for a bunch of products that you're going to be supplied for your business to bulk bill a number of individuals, okay? So when you receive a bill, okay, you're not the only person that receives that bill, okay? Probably a lot of people have received a bill from the same organization, but those bills have been customized so that your bill is specific to you and every other customer gets a different type of bill. Or it may be to reserve an item or service, such as booking tickets at the movies. So transaction processing systems need to support users in recording and tracking transactions which take place from external sources. Okay, so that a transaction record needs to be made, needs to be kept on file of the transactions, and depending on the type of transaction processing, processing system, that transaction may take place immediately or it could take place with a number of other transactions at a later date. So what we need to understand is these transaction processing systems are made up of the exact same components as any information system. And what we're going to take a look at now is how these components could be specific to a TPS. So let's take a look at our information system. And firstly, let's look at these purposes. And as said, these systems may be used to purchase an item, to process an invoice, to bulk bill a number of individuals or reserve an item or service. Okay, the systems could be user operated or they could be fully automated as well. So it might be just a traditional, some participant in the workplace does all the operations. Sometimes it is the customers entering their own data or scanning their own items, or sometimes these systems are fully automated and the system knows that on certain dates, it has to execute certain processes. Now, who are the users of these systems? Well, those same people that want to do those jobs of purchasing, processing, bulk billing, or reserving something. People who want to do like that. And I am trying to be broad because if you are doing the transaction processing unit, these are the types of examples that you do look at. But what environment might these exist in? And see, that's where transaction processing systems are very interesting because they can be based online. Think about it, when you do purchase things on your computer, when you're using e-commerce, you're accessing a system online. So internet technologies may be a factor here. But then again, they can also be face-to-face. -face. You can be at the counter and purchasing someone on the other side of the counter who is scanning your products for you. We also live in an age of self-checkout terminals. So you may be actually doing the transaction yourself, scanning your own items and putting through all the data in order to make that purchase. Okay, and as said, there's two types of processing in this unit. We have what's known as batch processing, which accumulates transactions and processes them all at a specific time, or real-time processing where transactions have to take place immediately. So these are all factors that affect the type of transaction processing system that we are using. Now, moving on to the information process. Firstly, for collecting, data may be collected through keypads and touchscreens, just like many other systems. But what's also used here are barcode readers, Merck scanners, RFID, ATM machines, and FPOS systems that can all be used to scan data from credit cards, from checks, or from products. And a lot of these, such as uh, barcode scanners and RFID, they may specifically be scanning just a barcode. And that code on the barcode is a primary key which then refers to an actual record on a database for further data to be retrieved. Now, for organizing these systems, we're talking about database management system software, and that's to arrange the transaction records of a database. Okay, it needs to arrange them so that they can be organized in a specific order so that they may be processed at a later date or arranged when they are processed immediately. For analyzing, we've got searching and sorting tools, and obviously we can query these databases using the database management system software. Then for storing retrieving, we have both transaction and master files. Okay, transaction files used for batch processing, where files wait before they are batch processed. And then master files, the main storage location where that data is uh, recorded and kept in the long term. Okay, so when batch processing does get updated, the master file gets updated at that scheduled time. Whereas in real time processing, the master file is updated immediately when a transaction takes place. Okay, and obviously we need to back this up with physical storage, and in many cases, the physical storage is on servers on a network, whether it be a, a local area network setup or on an online system server through the internet. 
for processing we need CPU processors and RAM to do our processing and as said it's used for the batch and real-time processing in specific to real-time processing we need a lot more power because the transactions have to take place immediately so we need CPU with a, a fast clock speed and can process as, uh, many lots of data at a time and then RAM with a lot of speed to support the CPU with transmitting and receiving, as said, we have online transaction processing taking place, more so with online real-time systems. So we need the infrastructure of hardware, network hardware, such as routers and switches set up, as well as the actual network mediums, such as wireless technology through radio and satellite, and our wire transmissions with fiber optic in place to support our system in an online environment. And then finally is the display monitors and printers to provide feedback to users okay Print printers being specific for printing off receipts when a transaction has taken place but obviously receipts can also be emailed and seen through the monitors of devices as well atm machines are mentioned here once again because when we do transact with a bank okay we do visualize everything on the screen and gives us prompts to use the system and fpos terminals allow us to communicate with banks and give us feedback through their monitors and print off our receipts so obviously that's a big overview of what's in the transaction processing system as well and really trying to break it up specific to certain information processes moving on to participants now there's a whole wide variety of participants but i'll just give you a few examples so we've got database administrators in charge of looking after the master files and transaction files on certain databases so transactions but also details maybe about customers and suppliers as well would be stored in different entities of these databases which need to be referred to when transactions take place Inventory teams would be in charge of making sure that inventory is up to date and then they have to update their systems master files when new inventory or stock comes into a place. And then also managers would refer to these databases like anything to ensure that transactions are correct and make sure that all products on store are accounted for. If they've lost products or lost money, they'd be referring to these products very carefully. The second last section is the data and information. And as says, a lot of data goes into the system through primary keys being scanned from barcodes and RFID, but also data may enter, be entered manually through keypads as well, okay, into the system. But that is how a lot of data goes into the system, through scanning technology, referencing a barcode to an actual database, and then retrieving the records associated with that primary key. So product information, its name, its price, things like that. Okay, and that's obviously the information that comes out of the system. The transaction specific inventory, supplier and customer details, all being retrieved from the data on the TPS. Finally, we have our information technology. Okay, so hardware such as CPU and UREM, as mentioned, very important in the processing. And then the barcode readers, Merck, RFID, ATM, FPOS, all very important in the collecting and some of those as well in the displaying of data for a TPS. And finally, the software, database management system software, network operating system software, and on the topic of operating system software, operating system software that supports a batch and real-time processing. So I hope this has given you an understanding of how a transaction processing system works and it's essentially its context, the components that make up the system in all the classic areas of an information system.